Good morning and welcome to the Congregational Church in Plainville. My name is Pastor Donna Cassidy and if you are joining us this morning on Facebook, we are especially welcome you and uh, hope that you will get a blessing from this ministry that we have to offer from our church. I will begin this morning with a call to worship to begin to center our hearts and minds on worshiping God. Travelers on the way, what shall we do? How shall we live with the confidence of God and God's beloved children with security and joy of God's saving grace? The promise is new. It's new life, forgiveness of sin, the spirit as a gift, beloved, how shall we praise? We lift our voices and our hearts in love, thanks, and praise. We will praise the Lord as long as we live. Let us pray. Loving God, we welcome your living presence in our midst. We share our joy and thanks for the life you give us. Dance among us. Pray with us. Shower all creation with your love. Amen. And now join me in the prayer of confession. Heavenly companion on the way, we yearn for your love and grace. We seek your wisdom and guidance. We relish the joy which burns within our hearts when you are with us. Yet sometimes we cling to you, hoard the blessings of relationship with you and not share your love with others. Forgive us, O God. Remind us that your love is to be carried throughout the world. Press us to share the hope and joy of your love as a witness to your grace. Shine the light of your spirit through us so that we may show your way to those who long for peace and revive hope in, the, in our world. And the assurance of grace is this, that God may come to us unrecognized as a stranger. The risen Christ reaches out to us in unexpected ways as we travel on our own roads to Emmaus. May the word of our everlasting God continue to burn in our hearts. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. I wanted to share with you today another one of God's great gifts. I hope you enjoy it. Today's story is a road to animus. Um, where did we leave off? It's been a couple weeks since Jesus has risen, and the disciples are still a little confused, and some of them are sad. Some just, don't, just do not understand what happened, and things are just a blur. They can't wrap their head around it. I understand it's big news. Jesus is alive in a new way. How can you explain that? Today's story, The Road to Animus, two disciples were traveling the road, and they were so consumed with the news, they didn't notice anything. They felt so many emotions, and they were talking their way. And a traveler heard them talking, very loudly and join the conversation. The disciples were so excited to fill them in and did you hear what's going on? Fill them in on all the news. They chatted and walked until nightfall. They consumed, they were so consumed with their emotions and telling stories, they didn't even notice what was going on around them and what was right in front of them. Nightfall had come upon come upon them and the two men asked the traveler to join them for dinner. At the table they closed their eyes for prayer and they invited the traveler to start prayer and as he start he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. <gasps> Do you know who this is? The disciples opened their eyes with surprise and they knew who this man was. It was Jesus right in front of them. And just as quickly, he was gone. Sometimes our lives are so busy with school and friends and so much more. We don't slow down enough to see the wonderful things that God puts right in front of us. Right now, things have slowed down a lot and they're very, very different. I totally understand that. Now is the time for us to take the opportunity to take a deep breath <sighs> and look around at the gifts that God has given us, right? He is with us every day in so many ways. Now is the time to let him in our hearts and have him guide us and rejoice because Jesus is alive. Please join me in prayer. God, we are thankful that as we go through these changes, you are walking beside us and you will help us see and understand the things that are happening in our lives. Amen. I would like to introduce now the scripture which comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. In the days after Jesus' death, two disciples find themselves on a lonely walk on a road called Emmaus when a stranger appears. The walk to Emmaus is a journey that we too take every day and Jesus challenges us to live with awareness of the holy all around us in our travels through life. Hear now from the Gospel of Luke chapter 24 beginning in verse 13. Good morning. This is a reading from the book of Luke chapter 24 verses 13 through 35. Now that same day two of them were going to a village called Emus about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. 
Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish are you? And how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what he, what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost gone. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts open our hearts to seeing you amongst us everywhere we go. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen. There are some things about what's happening now that are really not such a bad thing, like walking. Walking may have seemed like an obscure activity in our modern society with all its modes of transportation, even among those who do still walk from time to time, many have forgotten how to really walk until now. In the past, people walked down the streets, you know, they carried their cell phones pressed on their ears or they're looking at their iPad, moving their fingers around to tweet something. Walking just for the sake of walking was a lost art. Another thing we do just to get things done. But things have changed, haven't they? Now people walk with families and children and dogs and actually talk to each other as they're walking. It's not just one thing to do on our to-do list. It's a, become a matter of necessity and a way of getting outside and communicating as well as being good for our health. But this morning, we learn that it's really more than that. Jesus understood that walking could be a holy practice. Walking is something he did most of his lifetime. Jesus could have chosen to ride. He had his disciples fetch a donkey for him one time, and I'm sure some of his followers would have gladly donated a, a nice horse and a carriage for their teacher and mentor. But Jesus preferred to put his feet on the ground to deal with the dust and the occasional stone that might have gotten caught in his sandal. He kept him connected to the earth, connected to the holy and everyone around him. It slowed his pace, allowed him to see things, a sparrow, a beggar on the road, trees, a leper beside a fountain, plants, and perhaps even a glimpse of the holy itself. If he had chosen to ride, the world would have just passed him by, it would have been a, a blur. He'd be above it all, lording his power over people. But that's not how Jesus did things. And it's not how he encourages us to do things either. Instead, he challenges us to stroll through our lives, enjoy each moment of the journey, and notice the holy things around us, moving in and through and around us every moment. I wonder if we are doing more of that now since this is the only activity we're allowed to do outside of going to the store. In the past, we, like those disciples on the road to Emmaus, forget that walking is so very good for the soul. But now, I even find it life-saving. Yet, I'm still distracted. I don't know about you. The disciples may not have had cell phones pressed to their ears to distract them on their walk, but they sure did have a lot on their minds. Our, their leader, Jesus, had been arrested and tried and executed 
only days earlier. They had heard the tale of some women who told them of an empty tomb and now they journeyed to another town and we're not really sure why. Perhaps they just needed to get away, to think, to be somewhere safe that didn't hold such painful memories. And so they walked. We share this with these early disciples today, don't we? We just want to be safe from the painful realities going on all around us. Luke tells us that a stranger came and walked alongside of them. They tell the stranger about Jesus, his works, his death, words of an empty tomb, Yet all the while, they don't even recognize that the man who is walking beside them and talking with them is actually journeying with them. This is how our own cares and concerns can blind us as well in the presence of the holy that might be in our midst. We're distracted and fearful and worried about our loved ones and we need to get back to work. Our minds and our hearts are overloaded by all the noise all around and within us. We walk, but we don't see. We move forward, but we miss the scenery and the holy that is surrounding us. This is how we easily get pulled down into more despair. Jesus invites us to open our eyes because the Holy journeys with us and beside us all the time. We're all on a journey, every single one of us. I read recently, we are not all not in the same boat, but we are on the same ocean. Some of us, like the disciples in our reading today, are in an ocean of despair. Some of us are journeying in an ocean of joy. Some of us are journeying in an ocean of confusion. Some of us are journeying in an ocean of boredom. And most of us are journeying in this ocean of all these things at varying times. But no matter what your current ocean or journey is, the Holy walks with you, often in disguise. Opening up to the world around you, get, uh, giving you new insights, new ideas, new ways of being and living in the world. If only you would just listen and pay attention. Was the world the same before those disciples um, as they walked along? No, but they would soon see that it was going to be an awesome, a much better world. Will things be the same for us before we entered into this world pandemic? Some things may be, but some things won't be. They'll be different, but I believe they will also be better. When those disciples reached Emmaus, they invited the stranger to come and have dinner with them. They were so enamored with their guests that they um, could not fathom parting from him. So Jesus said, okay. And when he broke the bread with them, guess what happened? That's when they suddenly recognized him. Isn't that the way it always is? It's easier to see the holy in familiar rituals, especially those at table. Whether it's a formal communion celebration or friends uh, and family sharing a meal together, it can be easy to sense the holy in those moments of laughter and conversation around a table with extended family and friends to realize that the holy in things that may seem hidden or disguised when we are away from those kinds of settings, this is what Jesus is challenging us to now. Open your eyes and experience the wonder of each step of this journey that we are on. A, a journey in which we cannot move very fast right now. Life is crawling for us. Well, perhaps that's a good thing. This won't be a blur, but instead an invitation to make the destination secondary and open to the journey itself as the holy encounter. <clears throat> For in the journey is where God will meet us, where Jesus opens our eyes to a new life 
and where we find grace and where we find comfort. But the story isn't over. Just as the disciples recognize who Jesus at, uh, Jesus at the table, poof, he vanishes. Isn't that the way it is also? Whenever we get to see the holy in its full form, it seems to just vanish, just as we begin to recognize it. Well, why is this so? Sacred encounters with the holy, you see, are not meant for us to cling to. They are meant to surprise us, to keep our hearts and minds open to the ways and the one by which the holy comes to us. For the truth is, we are always on the road to Emmaus. One day Jesus may be with us on the road in the guise of a homeless person teaching us about compassion, or a child teaching us patience, or a dying friend, or, or in a pandemic teaching us about our own fragile existence here on earth. One day the presence of the Holy may come in a brilliant red cardinal or an unexpected flower birthing from the earth or the laughter of a child, reminding you of the breathtaking beauty of this blessed creation. One day the presence of the Holy may come in a breeze blowing, uh, you, blowing by you and blowing through your hair and reminding you to take a refreshing breath. One day the presence of the Holy may come in one with whom you have conflict, reminding you that you still have a lot to learn about yourself and others. And now learning to accept our differences about what is happening to us and why. There's a reason the early Christians are called people of the way. They knew they were on a journey. They knew and they have shown us that the Holy Spirit leads us day by day on a journey to God where disappointed hopes are interrupted by the recognition that the Holy walks by our side. And when we recognize this holy companionship on the way, we allow God to breathe life into our despair and hope upon our way. May our eyes, my dear friends, be opened to the one who travels with us. And may we know it's good to be on the road again. Take time to breathe now, to allow the Spirit to come into your minds and hearts and transform us all now. This is how we will survive this time. Amen. Let us pray. Mighty God, we come to you. You are our healer, our protector, our guide, our power, our comforter, our rock and our savior, our shield, our shepherd, most high God, our peace, the almighty and everlasting God, and so much more. Today we lift up our hearts and minds into your loving care and into your hands. We praise you for the friendship you have shown us in Jesus. 
as you have invited all of us to be your friends. Now empower us to be your ambassadors in the world. Give us courage to stand up on behalf of those whom the, re the world hates. Give us strength to live as your friends who know and do your will. Come alongside those who are in trouble now, O oh God. Be the companion to those who are lonely, strength to the weak, and hope for the grieving. Be present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. And today we pray for Bill Buxton, Mary Fuller's 96-year-old uncle who has COVID-19. May he recover completely and we ask that you send your healing hands of the Holy Spirit upon him now. We ask your special blessing upon Rex and Cheryl's son and wife, expecting another baby. Protect the mother and baby and their family during this time. Comforting God, take away the fear and anxiety and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment under quarantine. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure to this disease. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. And we remember the words of St. Paul, do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation by, power, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. These prayers we present to you tonight in the name of Jesus, who is our rock and redeemer and who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The author of First Peter implores us to love one another deeply from the heart, and assures us that we have been born anew through the living and enduring Word of God. In our giving today, let us give not out of obligation, but give from the heart. Let our gifts be seeds of the living and enduring Word of God around the world today. We appreciate your gifts, your pledges, and offerings to keep our ministry going so that we can offer light and hope in this community. You're invited to give through your bank account directly or just mailing in your offerings to the church office. Let us pray. Jesus, God has made you both sovereign and Christ. Therefore, we pray for your blessing upon these gifts, upon us and those whose lives will benefit from them. May your victory over death empower all whom you call to trust in God. In faith and hope we pray, amen. Friends, rejoice in the love of God. 
Rejoice in the victorious life of the risen Savior. Rejoice in the power of the Spirit living in you. Go and serve others in the name of Jesus Christ. May your lives praise the Lord. Amen.